put them in this white cage. Um, I figured, why not? I mean, they're they're going to be more comfortable in here anyway. Um, it's got a lot more space. I don't know if they're going to utilize every single perch in here. I don't know if they're going to care to investigate that high up. Um, but I'm sure that eventually, once once they realize that they're there, they'll they'll eventually jump on up, up on the lower perches. I actually was going to wait until our chicken chick um, no longer needed a uh, heat lamp. But instead I just um, decided I was going to take the flight cage and move it over to where the heat lamp could reach. Um, and just just do it a little early. So, so they'll be in here until um, we get our temporary um, aviary set up. So we'll be able to sex these guys uh, definitively. A lot of them don't have uh, a feather color that you can sex by the feathers, so we'll have to vent sex them. Unlike chickens, quail are super easy to vent sex. Um, you just simply wait until they're about, I don't know, five to six weeks old. And um, at that point, if they're not crowing yet, you, you can just know by looking at the vent. So that's a for sure 100% accurate way to, to sex quail. We'll get to that later. But uh, basically, I want to see how many roosters versus hens I have so that I have a good ratio. The roosters aren't going to fight over the hens. Um, any really aggressive birds will be uh, culled because it's not fair to the other birds if they're so aggressive and it's there's no reason for it you know um, meaning uh, it's not a hen rooster ratio thing they're just kind of born with that really aggressive personality um, and they're aggressive to the point where they're really hurting the other birds pecking their eyes making them bleed making them bald you know um, so if they're that uh, aggressive, all they're going to do is injure your flock and, um, you know, stress out your flock. So you don't want that. Uh, so those will be either um, butchered or somehow, um, you know, possibly rehomed. The other ones that are uh, docile, we're going to try to keep even if it's a little more than uh, over your ideal amount of roosters for hens. If everybody gets along, we're going to just kind of go with it. Um, the, the main thing is that everybody gets along. If we have some extra roosters that have some pretty good personalities, but um, are just extra, and we don't have enough hens to really uh, keep them all satisfied, then um, what I'll try to do is I'll try to separate them, save them for like a like a bachelor bachelor only cage, and save them for um, our younger uh, our younger generations of quail that are currently in the brooder still. Uh, it'll only be a few weeks, so it won't be that long that it would have to wait. Uh, especially if you get a really nice sweet-tempered rooster or a rooster that's got really good genetics that you're looking for. Either it's whatever that may be, whether it's big or whether it's got a color that you like um, and paired with that really sweet personality. Um, so we'll just go with that first and then if we still have too many roosters, which is highly possible, then all the nice ones we're going to do our best to kind of rehome because uh, because they're nice and they don't really deserve to be cold. If you haven't watched the other videos and you're looking at this weird fluffy thing in the middle of all these quail, yes, that is a chicken. Um, she was all alone and needed some friends, so she um, sort of befriended the quail, and um, her stress and anxiety has gone down to zero since we've given her these quail as friends. Um, when we get more chickens, we may eventually um, introduce her um, to the other chickens and have her kind of um, grow up with the chickens, but for right now she's with the quail.
may be a long time till we get um, the permanent setup for the aviary. That temporary aviary is just a, a literal um, tent setup that you can move um, when the grass gets too worn into a different area. Um, it's not ideal, but it's it'll it'll work. It'll be much better than in this flight cage. Right now we have a quail that is extremely interested in the camera. Maybe, maybe it's its own reflection, I don't know, but just really wants to check out the camera. One thing I've noticed about quail is that they are very inquisitive and um, they definitely are aware more of what's going on around them um, than, than chickens seem to be. Chickens, they're sort of aware of it, but they, they're in their own little world uh, most of the time and um, they really could care less unless it directly involves them. They don't really investigate much. Anyway, we hope to get these guys outside and in the free range environment as soon as we get that um, temporary setup up and running. Very little instances where some kind of fluke accident like that would happen. Although, you know, of course, birds do stupid things. I'm not ruling out that that can happen. Uh, I, I just don't think it would happen very often. I think more it would be a predator got in there and um, was able to either get its talon or get its little paw or something in between the cage or it was small enough to squeeze through a hole um, and then tried to pull the bird out and couldn't pull the bird out and so it kind of just, you know, either got stuck up there um, or it laid on the ground, perhaps, um, and people that didn't see it, didn't see what happened, um, may just assume that the quail hurt itself and died that way. Um, not likely. Not, not likely. I think it's more predator-based or, um, like I said, something that doesn't have enough freedom that is constantly trying to get out and that is frantically trying to get out to the point where it uh, hurts itself that way. If you have a free range environment, that's really not going to happen. If you make the environment uh, with enough enrichment, that's just not going to happen. Uh, you don't need much. Um, the kind of places that I could see potentially quail fighting for their life to get out is, are those places that are just so packed in together that they, they don't have hardly any room to turn around. Um, and so the only way that they can go, since they can't go left or right, the only place they have to go would be up. So I, I could see in that case where they would fly up just, just to get room and then are just trying to escape being crammed in and then hurt themselves out of desperation. If it's free range, you get rid of that problem. Um, so, yeah, they might still try to escape your little free range pen to see what's on the other side, but um, are they gonna, you know, hurt themselves trying to get out? Probably not. Um, and they're probably not gonna even care, you know. Um, as long as the door is shut, they're, they're probably not e going to even care one way or the other if they've got a big enough space. That's another thing. Um, free range, uh, the, the, the requirements for free range are ridiculously small, in my opinion. Um, for chickens, I think it's something like, it's something ridiculous like one square foot or two square foot per bird. That, that's just, that's, that's not much at all. Um, you know, that you have 10 chickens in a 20 by 20 and call it free range. And that's just, that's just sad in my opinion.
So that's another thing we're doing for the quail. Once we get this set up, this permanent setup, it'll be a lot bigger than the initial um, free range uh, enclosure. And it'll, it'll be a much bigger aviary so that they really do feel like they are free, as free as they can be without uh, the, the um, constant threat and almost imminent death of predators. We're going to put, um, hopefully going to put some natural branches in the aviary. So um, they'll have even some, some branches to sit on um, from, from real trees. Um, hoping to just find some dead but uh, sturdy and strong and solid branches from some trees. On, on our own property that we can use for that. So all natural uh, stuff there um, and not going to kill any trees in the process.